Um, Chris Broussard joining us. Okay, first of all, you know, the Patriots can make a trade. It doesn't make the wires. <laughs> Chris Paul got traded from the Clippers. I didn't know about it. Isn't there? I mean, LeBron, I got clutch sports. I got magic on Kimmel. I got drama. Why, why do we have to have all this? It's tearing the Lakers apart. Well, in fairness, this is probably the Pelicans leaking stuff. You think so? Yeah, yeah. And for instance, when the story broke that Anthony Davis was had told them he wasn't going to resign and he wanted to trade, right? That was the Pelicans leaked it to Adrian Wojnarowski. He called Clutch Rich Paul, and Rich just confirmed it. So I think the Pel and look, the Pelicans have every reason to sabotage this and not play ball along with this. So I think I'm not saying there aren't some leaks coming out of the Lakers. I don't think it's Magic Johnson talking to reporters, telling them stuff. But I do think mainly a lot of this is coming from the Pelicans camp. How come the Clippers can trade Blake and Chris Paul and Tobias Harris? And I don't hear anything. And why with the Lakers? I hear everything. Well, one, they may make stipulations like, look, if this gets out, you can forget it. So why wouldn't um, they? They may do stuff like that. But two, there were different situations. This situation had to get ugly. Like, Anthony Davis has another year on his deal. It's oh, no, not I, like he's a free agent this summer. Good point. So the only way for him to get to the Lakers was to cause a stir. He doesn't want to be the bad guy, but there was no other way to get out of there. So this had to happen. But, you know, Joy and I have talked about this. Let's say it doesn't happen. So let me ask not, you this. You don't not, think this, not by tomorrow. It may happen this summer, but not by tomorrow. Okay. There's no way. I mean – First of all, Dell Demps, you know how the league works. You've got advisors, guys you came up under, guys you trust, you talk to in other teams. I'm told all executives around the league are telling him, you'd be crazy to do this by the deadline. And why would I, when Boston may be able to offer a better package, when, let's see what those picks are that they can offer me. Uh, when, when New York, I don't know that they would necessarily give up the number one or two pick if they get it. But let's wait and see. Why do I have to do it now? I can get this Lakers package minus some of the veterans who are on one-year deals in the summer. They will be just this desperate. All this, this notion that, oh, they'll have all the leverage in the summer. No, they won't. LeBron James is not coming back for his 17th year playing with a mediocre supporting cast that he knows cannot win a championship. So he will tell them in August, just like he's telling them now, get AD. Whatever it takes, get him. So I can get this in the summer. Okay. But you're not going to win a championship with AD. Okay. So LeBron and – You mean – AD and LeBron and everybody else has been traded. Every draft pick, every player is not <laughs> winning a title in Reggie Bullock. So at some point <laughs> the, you need a third guy. Right. Well, they would – first of all, those two are a heck of a foundation. Um, and I don't think you necessarily need three, necessarily. If you got two stars and then good pieces that form around well, them, you're giving them all away. I think that's good. Now, I also think, and, and I'm going to throw this out there, just Jimmy Butler, he's a guy that the Lakers should look at. Because, one, the, the, the Philadelphia getting Tobias Harris, that gives them insurance that if they don't want Jimmy Butler, I can still have a big three. Tobias is a better fit. Butler's a better player, but Tobias is a better shooter. Yeah. And he will spread the floor better with Ben Simmons. No and drama, no drama. No drama. Great kid, you know, and he'll he'll accept being the third guy. And and Jimmy's not going to have the market he thinks he is. Trust me. Like, in Chicago, Minnesota, Philadelphia, it's the same story that he's wreaking havoc in the locker room. And so he's not going to have that market. You look at the common thread in where he's been, Chicago, Minnesota, Philadelphia. All of them had – some of them had better players than him, but they were young. They were much younger than him. They were guys he didn't have to come in and defer to. If he goes to the Lakers, he will defer to LeBron James, both in the locker room and on the court. And I think it could work. LeBron's never shied away from tough personalities. J.R. Smith, Rajon, Rajon Rondo, got Michael Beasley. So if I'm the Lakers, they're not getting KD. They're not getting Kyrie. They're not getting Clay, They're not getting Kawhi. So if you can trade for Anthony Davis and then also get Jimmy Butler, but, there is a heck of a big Okay, thing. so you don't think the deal's happening Thursday. No. So you tell me. So from February, March, and April, Luke Walton has a team where the young guys feel like throw pillows, irrelevant pawns. LeBron, is LeBron going to give me 99%? No, I'm a waste of my legs. 
Luke Walton's done, right? Like, this is over. This he's, is in, we, we all knew he'd be the scapegoat, and he's now go- it's setting up for him to be that. I said a few weeks on here, remember, LeBron James is a gangster. Gangster. And and what's one of his favorite movies? He watches all Godfather. the time. Godfather. Godfather. So I'm sure he likes Michael Corleone and all that. We don't think of LeBron as a gangster because he's polished. He's not a killer like Kobe and Jordan. You know, he'll pass the ball on the court and all that. But remember Michael Corleone, he had other he was the brains behind it, but other guys were doing the dirty work. Yeah. That's how LeBron is. And he what he knows because that's what it takes to win. Now you can criticize him like most gangsters. He wreaks havoc. There's chaos. Everything is left in ruins when he's done, <laughs> right? But he at the end of the day, he got two titles for Miami. He got one in Cleveland for the first time in 52 year, years in any sport. And he didn't used to be like this. I was around him a lot when he first was in Cleveland. And if it was Delonte West, Sasha Vujacic, Flip Murray. Anderson Verjao, I'm going, these are my guys, we're going to war. But he saw what that got him, 60-something wins in the regular season and and out in the second or third round. I said this earlier to Joy, there's two LeBrons. There's the LeBron in Cleveland in the first three years in Miami. He was all in on teams. And then the last year in Miami, all of Cleveland and the Lakers, LeBron's part of a team. Right. But he not all in. He's got his empire, he's got his mission, he's got his worldview, he's got his businesses. I don't love that. Tom Brady is all right. in. Could I not criticize LeBron for dude? The first nine years of this career, win or lose, you were one of the guys. It doesn't feel like that in the last year Miami, Cleveland, L.A., LeBron has an agenda. Now, you're saying the agenda is titles. It's t- well, he, he's obviously got many agendas. And you can see, I mean, he's been here. Rob Parker, my partner on iCup, always says he came here to be Meryl Streep, you know. <laughs> and he's got a new TV show like every two weeks coming out. It is unbelievable. So that's an agenda. But also, he does want to win championships. He's not playing for any other reason at this point. It's to win titles. And you're right. The one thing you said that I think is very strong is what's LeBron going to be like after the deadline if they don't get anybody else? Like the other guys, and I do think this is in the back of LeBron's mind because he knows it's human nature that these it's tough for these young kids. He even said so last night. Yeah. But he's in the back of his mind. I'm sure he's thinking, look, this is this may not be the only time you're going to be in trade rumors. This, you may get traded several times in your career. Welcome to the world of business in basketball. The NBA basketball world is business. And if you're not mentally tough enough to come back a week or two after the deadline, it may take a few games, okay, but if you're not mentally tough enough to come back a week or two after the deadline and give your A game and play well and play despite feeling like I wanted a superstar who we know is better than you, then we're wasting our time anyway. You're not cut out to be a championship player. You're not cut out to be a star in this league because everybody has to play through drama and feeling unwanted and things like that in this league, all but maybe the top-tier superstars. You know, so players around Kobe Bryant had to do it. Players around Michael Jordan had to do it. So I think that that's what LeBron's thinking. We're going to see what these kids are made of. I know it's ugly. I know it's tough. But they they got to have the heart and the toughness to play through it after the deadline. That was very well said. Thank you. You almost swayed me on that. Was very well <laughs> said. That was a kind of a referee. That was one of your you better. You don't agree though. No, I do. I think I do agree. I think that was very well said. That's gonna, let me think about that. Let me. Let All me, right. I got. I convert- gave you a lead for tomorrow. <laughs> <laughs> Hi everybody! Thanks for watching. Subscribe here to get the latest from the show. Also, be sure to check out more of the best clips from The Herd or go watch a few segments from other shows on FS1.